I know you. He's been good to me. It's us. If you don't believe it, just pinch yourself. Amen, amen. The Lord has been good, and he is good, and he'll continually to be good. He's called us to himself and to be his workmen in his vast vineyard. And we want to say, praise God from whom all blessing flows. Because he is worthy of every and all praises that any of us would think of asking for. Isn't God good, church? Tell it now. Amen. Come on now, Rip. I can't hear you. Tell it now. Tell them honk them horns. Look at the sunshine. Tell it now. Shining down on you and and I. Look at us. Look at how good God is. Amen. God is a great God. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. And the sunlight is affecting my computer. So I'm not going to worry about it. Amen. Because there is a word that the Lord has placed in my spirit that I want to share with us from the scripture that has been read in our hearing. I want to read three verses, four verses from the scripture, the same scripture. Verse 12, verse 17, verse 22, and 23. And I'll be reading from the new international version of the Bible. It says, Eli's sons were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord. In verse 17, it says, This is of the young men the sins of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight, for they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. Verse 22 and 23, Now Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all, the Israel, to all of Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of the meeting. So he said to them, why do you do such things? I heard from all the people about these w wicked deeds of yours. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for this day and thank you for life, health, and strength. Father, decrease me and you increase that while I speak, the people will see and hear you. Lord, Use me now like only you can. Use me to lift up the downhearted. Use me, God, to, to give encouragement to those who don't feel much encouragement. Lord, use me. Use us in these services today. For you have taught us that wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst. 
But while you're in our midst, God, use me to declare your richest treasures. This I ask in Jesus' name, and I do pray. Amen. I want to lift up this line. Consistent fatherhood behaviors. Consistent fatherhood behaviors. 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 This word has been in my spirit for quite a while. And I know that Father's Day was last Sunday. But I still want to share this word with us today. Consistent fatherhood behavior behaviors. We live in a world where the father is absent from the home. He is not involved in the well-being of his family. Fathers are precious in God's sight, and fathers are precious socially. Fathers are ones that everyone in the family looks up to. They look up to their fathers as their priests. They look up to their fathers as their providers. They look up to their fathers as their security. And they look up to their fathers when times are not good. Whenever the family or one in the family is going through some kind of difficulty, a father's presence changes the atmosphere. A father's presence does something to the situation at hand. The father's is very precious. Fatherhood is precious because too many fathers, as I said, are still absent from the home. When we look at this text, we have Eli and his two sons who, for whatever reason, was not regardful of God, not regardful or respectful of his offering, not regardful or respectful of what God has done and is still able to do. And my brothers and sisters, there are folks like that still in the world today. You can begin with the church house and go down through the different auxiliaries that makes up the church. There are some inconsistencies that need to be addressed, especially with the fathers. Absenteeism. Yes, Eli's sons, as the text say, they were scoundrels. They were rascals. They were uh, bad boys in God's house. Not only were they bad boys, but they did not know God. That's what the Bible says. The New King Virgin says they did not regard God. That word regard means to consider to think of, to recognize someone or something good that has been done or that we have seen in another person. Regard, 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 consider and praise them for their worth because they are worthy of praise. 
like the first responders of COVID-19 who are I dub as humanitarians. They risk their lives, they put their lives on the line for humanity. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. They need to be recognized. They should be recognized Amen. because they did not have to do what they did, but thank God they did. And despite their efforts, despite their heroism and heroism, a lot of lives still was lost. But that does not diminish or take away from who they were and their work. They still are valuable. And even today, they still are valuable. And they're still worth recognizing. Eli's son, Hopney, or Hopner, and Phoenix were bad boys. Whenever Israel will come to the annual conference, I call it, or tent a meeting, they disregard the Lord. They disregard the sanctuary. They disregard my brothers and sisters. They disregard the Israelites' offering to God. But I want to warn us that we need to be careful how we treat the Lord. We need to be careful how we misuse and, and, and abuse God's sustenance, God's sanctuary, because there is, will be a price to pay. Yes, these two guys, bad boys, rascals, villains, whatever you want to dub them as or call them, they were just that and more. Whenever Israel shows up for the annual sacrifice, they will be cooking, roasting, boiling the sacrifice, trying to burn the fat, which were the usual protocol, their norm, their standard. But these two sons, servants of Eli, and dubbed servants of the Lord, was supposed to assist Eli and serve the people. Hello, y'all. My job, our job here as leaders, is to serve God's people here at Ebenezer. And in serving God's people here at Ebenezer, God will get the glory and not Clarence, not my fellow classmates, Leroy McElveen, but God will get the glory. And not only us, but the musicians and all of those who provide a service. Amen. God will take care of us. And guess what? In the end, he will recognize us for what we're worth, for our contribution for our fellowship. Yes, these two sons will, will come and they will just take a, a fork and stick it in the pot and pull up some meat. And whatever comes up, they would take it. Notice I said, take it. It wasn't given to them. It was supposed to be given as an offering to God. They would take it and they would uh, 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 insists that the Israelites or the offerer gives it up. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, 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 and if they didn't give it up, then they would demand them to give it up. Hello? It's in the text. Read the whole thing again. They would demand, and if they didn't get it, then they would threaten them to give it up. Hello, y'all. How many of us know that there's still people that sit high as well as low that's just like that in the world today? 
I, I know some people like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they go around and take what they please as well as demand what they want. They even turn around and will threaten you. Hello. In some form, one way or another, to get their way. And my brothers and sisters, God did not call Christians to be threatening, to be forcing others to do their, their biddings and their will. God made us to be accommodating. Hello, y'all. He made us to compromise. He made us to, to receive the normal and righteous protocols that are established in making offerings unto our God. We're here today offering a sacrifice to God. We're here offering ourselves. We're offering our bodies as living sacrifices to God. And what we are saying by being present, we are saying, God, here I am. I'm available. I want you to use me to be a blessing to somebody else. But not these boys. Not these rascals. And secondly, in verse 17, it goes down and it tells us that uh, uh, this sin of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight. For they were treated and treating the Lord's offering with contempt. I, I, I like that word, but I want to use that word interchangeably with uh, disregard. Uh, contempt is a word that, that most people think of a courtroom and people's action even, even, even outside the courtroom as well as inside the courtroom. Contempt is not showing up for a court summons. Contempt is disturbing the court of law in progress. That's contempt. That's disregard. They disregard God's stuff. Whenever we disregard the stuff or the things of God, God will punish us. And that's where the fatherhood comes in. Fathers, good fathers, fatherhood behaviors come in. When fathers are in the home and fathers are doing, are doing purposely what God has assigned for them to do, then there will be well-being within that household. Sometimes a father has to discipline. Sometimes a father has to chastise, rebuke. And the question becomes, did Eli rebuke his boys? I did not find anywhere where he rebuked his boys, but what I did find was this, that although Eli, Eli was a devout and sincere man, he was also a weak and indulgent man, which means he was easy going. Hello, y'all. And he allowed some things to go on that he shouldn't have allowed to go on. Hello, y'all. I don't know about you, but uh, 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 in raising my children, I allowed some things that should not have been allowed. Although they accused me of being a, a disciplinarian. I wasn't perfect. And, and if you be honest with yourself, you have allowed some things to. How many times have we seen children playing and we look at it and laugh and call it cute? Hello? And you know it's not right. But you say, oh, that's a baby. Let that baby alone. Leave that baby alone. But guess what? If those kinds of little things go unchecked in children and young people and adolescents and adults, it continues to mushroom and develops into something very, very ugly. Hello, y'all. 
you 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 cannot you cannot you cannot repair broken men but you can raise your children to be strong hello y'all y'all didn't hear what i said you can't repair you can't raise a man as grown twice it's best to instruct him or her while they're young. It's important to let our children see dad in action as a father. Hello? As opposed to giving advice all the time. As opposed to being critical of their actions all the time. We must remember, fathers, that we are here to, to lead our families. We are here to to teach our families. We are, we are here not only to teach them, but to educate them, but we are here also to be involved in their lives. Hello, y'all. That's why if Pastor Winley was here, I believe he would echo the fact that that's why there are too many young men in prison today. Hello, y'all. Oh, I know he will. I know he would. That's one of the main reasons. A father, a father, a mother can only raise a man, a young man, a child by herself, especially a man, to a certain age. The father figure needs to be near or present or be in that child's life, whether it's a boy or girl. But for a boy, a, a, a male figure, fatherhood is a necessity. It is imperative that they be active and involved in their lives to continue to make a difference. That means they have to be consistent, y'all. It means that you and I have to be involved in our children's lives, and if we are, we are being consistent, and we have to be consistent. Be consistent with how we treat them. Be consistent with how we discipline them. Be consistent with how we develop them into heroes, the kind that God wants us to develop into. My brothers and sisters, not only that, these young men had contempt, disregard for God offering. And we're getting ready now, in a short period, short time, to participate in communion, which is the same thing in this text in terms of offerings. We will soon be offering communion to all of us, but we'll be asking God, Say, Lord, here it is. I have examined myself. Here it is. Here I am. And, and I'm not completely whole. I'm broken, but I need you to fix me. I need you to fix my mind, fix my heart, fix my entire being at this particular time. Because this is the time where we can draw nearer to God doing this time of offering our offerings by the way of the sacrament to God. Amen, somebody. And my brothers and sisters, my third and final point that I want to make is in verse 22 and 23. Yes, consistent fatherhood behaviors is not about immorality, but morality. Amen, y'all. Eli, who was an old man, in fact, one of my researchers said he was about 87 years old. But his age does not excuse him for not having raised his boys. Hello, y'all. In fact, there is no excuse that any of us could give that would satisfy, that would excuse us from raising, having raised our children. My brothers and sisters, we need to understand that our God is a God 
who sits high, but he looks low. These young men, these rascals, these scoundrels, these sons of the devil committed all kinds of evil deeds. And not only that, they slept with the women serving at the entrance of the temple. Hello, y'all. That's sad. That's sad. That's sad. God has set them apart to serve mankind. Just like he set you and I apart to serve him. God has, has anointed and saved us that we might be teachers and preachers and doers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello, y'all. Not to violate his commandment. Consistency. Consistency. Fatherhood behaviors are those that we show regard for, are those that we compromise and accommodate, are those that we are integrous about in our activities. They are those that will please God. They are those that will deliver us from sinfulness and save us from eternal damnation. As I get ready to take my seat, I want to close by saying to us, my brothers and sisters, we need to re-examine ourselves. We need to re-examine what we say, how we say it, and to whom we say it. Because every word that goes out of our mouth will be judged by God. My brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I'm concerned about our society. I'm concerned because of what happened on January 6th. I'm concerned of what happened in 1921 at Tulsa and many other Tulsas. I'm concerned about folks who claim to be and when you look at their lifestyle, it is not what they say it is. I'm concerned because God is coming back and he's going to judge us. He's going to judge the right and he's going to judge the wicked. But I don't know about you, but I want to be among the crowd of the righteous. I want it to be that I have tried with my utmost and all my efforts to please Almighty God. What about you? I want it to be said and be observed and be noticed that, that I have went the last mile of the way of my journey to please the Lord. What about you? I want to know that when God comes back, I will be able to hear from what many of the Patriarchs sleeping in their graves has heard, welcome thy good and faithful servant. You have fought a good fight. You have been consistent in your fatherhood duties. You have been consistent in your Christian duties. You have been consistent and you have matured. Now, come up a little higher and enjoy the fruits of the Lord, the riches of his glory. And I will remake you into a new human being. This is what God has placed on my heart, and I pray that I've said something that will help you this day and during the course of this week. God bless you. Amen. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. It is our duty, my duty, to extend to each of you, especially those that are not saved. The right hand of fellowship. Fellowship. 
to becoming a child of God. Fellowship. If you need restoration, fellowship to come back to the Lord and desire to be a disciple, a real disciple. God is calling. He's saying, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's still saying in the book of Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart, and I knock, and, and I want you to let, let me in, and I will sit on the throne of your life. He's saying, come now. The chance, your chance is right now to come to the Lord, who's beckoning you with outstretched arms, not his arms. His arms through my arms. Will you come? Thank you for watching the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church YouTube channel brought to you by the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church Media Ministry. If you are new to Ebenezer or to our channel, we invite you to become a member of our online community. Subscribe to this channel so you're notified whenever we add new videos. Also, click on the like and share buttons. Go to our website, www.embcmanning.org. There you'll find links to our other YouTube channel, and it would be great if you could subscribe to that one also. Join us via telephone for prayer at 6 a.m. daily and Bible study on Wednesday thing at 7 p.m. The number is 712-451-0977, access code 625566-POUND. To give to our church and the media ministry, you can go to our website and click on Givelify or mail a check or money order to P.O. Box 728, Manning, South Carolina, 29102. You can also join us in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our parking lot services at 105 Dickens Street in Manning, South Carolina. Just park near the church and turn your radios to 96.1. Thank you. May God bless you.